two things can turn your day around. One, just go for a walk outside, get out of that stale environment of your home, get out for a walk, even if it's for 10 minutes. And the other thing you can do to immediately change your day is do something kind for someone else. Welcome to the Start Anywhere podcast. You're in the right place if you want to hear inspiring stories and get fired up to live life to the fullest. I'm Crystal Garrett, broadcaster turned podcaster, former national team runner and serial goal getter. Every week you'll hear fascinating stories from people all over the world. Every single person you'll meet once started anywhere and eventually made their dreams come true. The aim of this podcast is to entertain you but hopefully inspire you. Whether you're after a small goal or a big dream, the best place to start is wherever you are right now. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's start anywhere. Well, can you believe it? This is the final episode of season one. Oh my gosh, when I started, I was wearing winter boots. And today I walked into Mike's podcast, Atlantic Studios, wearing sandals. It's amazing how much you can get done in about six months. And even getting this podcast started, my goodness, I hemmed and hawed for years and it finally came together. So I want to start off this podcast by giving a shout out to the man across the room, Mike, Podcast Atlantic. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't even be doing this thing. Thank you for taking that call on that fateful day and uh, and helping me get things going because this truly is a dream come true. And I also want to shout out to you for listening. Thank you for being along on this journey. It means so much to me. Me. And this podcast has been such a learning experience. I hope you've learned a thing or two along the way, but I have learned so much. In fact, I've tried to boil down the top 10 lessons that I've learned into this episode so that you can walk away with a nice little summary of season one and hopefully walk away with a few tips that you might be able to apply to your life. So I'm going to give you the tips that I learned from the guests. And I think tip one is that you really don't have to settle in life. You can change careers. And and we just heard from Melissa in our last episode, Melissa Burbridge, and um, she talks about how she left her nursing career and just takes a whole new direction. And she's more successful than she's ever been. She just loves, loves her life. So I want to say that it is possible to change careers. I have done it many, many times. And I've even gone back recently to a, a career that I had before television. In fact, getting this podcast started, an unexpected sort of side effect of it is once I sort of put my voice out there and interviewed people and, and did what I love to do, telling the kinds of stories that I love to tell, inspiring stories, I think it kind of got the attention of my former employers. And I, I even found myself sort of chatting with both of them about coming back. And I ended up coming back to um, to one because they, they assured me that I'd be able to have flexibility, continue to do the podcast and continue to pursue some other interests of mine that I'm very excited about. So it's funny how you can change careers at any time in your life. I, I did it in my 20s and I've done it all through my life and, and maybe I'll, I'll do it again. And you can too at any age. It's absolutely possible. Or the door's always open to go back and try something that you've done in the past. And with television, I will tell you that it's exhilarating to be back. I forgot how much I missed it. I'm working with wonderful people. But the industry has changed and I, I have to learn how to VJ, which is become a video, videographer, video journalist. And that means that you're you're a one man band. Like I don't know if you've seen Mary Poppins, if you've seen uh, Dick Van Dyke with that, that beating drum and and cymbals on his knees and all and a harmonica like you you have it's like you're balancing a whole bunch of stuff and doing playing all the instruments yourself and it's incredibly humbling i was terrified to start really like sweating oh my gosh i'm just so 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 nervous doing it but um i'm learning and it's really satisfying to learn something new it's really exciting to push yourself way out of your comfort zone. And I hope that you have the experience to do that too. And the reason I, I hope that you do is because when you are feeling fear, and this is another lesson, I think that this is, lesson one is kind of two parts. If you, you don't have to settle in life and you can change direction at any time, but don't let fear hold you back. Because fear is really, I've discovered, what you're most scared of is the thing you really need to do. 
And I know with TV, I was hemming and hawing for a long, long time. For years, I sort of longed to go back, but I was just sort of thinking, nope, it's over. And then when the opportunity to come back came, I mean, I really, really kicked and screamed. But I ultimately decided, no, this is something I have to do. And um, I think that in your life, any, the thing that you're scared of is a thing you need to do because – once you overcome that fear, you're so free and you feel so good, really so good to be on the other side. So I have a friend, her name is Lisa Marie Telly, and she has a podcast as well that I can link in the show notes. But she has an episode about how um, she got a, a tattoo that says, your fear will set you free. Because in her life, she found that every time something really scary came up, she faced that fear and then it kind of unlocked the door and she was able to sort of rise up to, to heights you never even imagined. And I found that that's true. So if there's something right now that you're terrified to do, I don't know whether it's showing up on social media or maybe you are feeling stuck in your life right now and you just really need to um, perhaps look at other career options that might light you up more. Or maybe it's not too late to take French lessons. Or maybe you're like Bob Stewart who talks about his journey of weight loss. Maybe it's time for you to make a change in your life health-wise, but you're just really scared to do it. You're scared to go to the gym or you're scared of what people will think if you're walking down the street in workout clothes. All of us have some sort of fear, but I'm telling you it's there as a, almost like a signpost, as an invitation to go after it. And when you do, you will be happier. You will feel better about yourself. I know I do. I'm, I can't even, I started to kind of look at all the stuff that I've accomplished already this year. It's, it's shocking. Like the amount of things that I've accomplished that were on my bucket list, wish and dream list from 2022 January to now, um, which is June, it's, it's a giant list. And if you, then I kind of thought about what had happened the last few years and really nothing happened. Like the graph was just sort of like flat line and then it would bajoop, bajoop, like 2022 has been huge. So it is, it's because I just sort of faced my fear. The podcast is one of those fears I faced. I was terrified to do it, but I finally did it. You just sort of take action and then everything starts to just sort of open up for you. So it really is back to the title of the podcast start anywhere you really do you really do just have to start anywhere just take any kind of action in the direction of the fear you have and you'll be just shocked at the up levels so that's one thing now kind of related as well is own your mistakes I have made a ton of mistakes with the TV. Like, oh my gosh, so embarrassing. I forgot to press record on the camera. I forgot to put the little SD card in that record the images. I, uh, I Yesterday, I, I dropped the camera in the mud. Like, it is just unbelievable because I didn't have it on the tripod properly. Like, so many mistakes. It is okay to make mistakes. I was scared to admit, like, how much I didn't know. And last week, a friend of mine actually just stayed after work and, and we like I, I was in tears and she just I just admitted like, oh, my God, I'm way in over my head. I cannot do this. And I'm even getting emotional talking about it now. And she's like, we've all been there. And she walked me through like a beautiful, like kind of, I don't know, just a beautiful soul who, who kind of helped me. But I, if I hadn't been honest and told her I was over my head, she wouldn't have helped. And it really made a big difference. So it, by Owning our mistakes by admitting we don't have all the answers, by kind of laying yourself bare, that's the only way you can learn. It's the only way you can ask for help, and it's the only way that you can actually get better is by just like, you know, kind of like not being right. Like you, you have to just admit that you're, you're, you don't have the answers or even that you're wrong. You know, be accountable if you do screw up. It will, all of that will not only set you free and kind of set your conscience free, but it also frees you up to learn. And failure is how we learn. I'll give another example of, of a quantum leap I made this year and an epic fail. I have always wanted to become a Pilates instructor and um, it was super hard. Like, there, though, when you are in a fitness class, you just think, oh, it's hard doing the class. But having been in the position of the person who's actually teaching the class, there's a lot to think about. And for me, there was a lot to learn. And I hadn't felt that kind of sweaty terror of kind of putting myself on the line and really laying it all out there. I, haven't, I hadn't felt that sweaty terror uh, since I was competing at a high level in track and field. And that was, that was many years ago. So for in my life, of course, you have your challenges and things. But I had not felt that kind of that, that sort of raw adrenaline filled excitement and fear 
you know, it had been like, my gosh, it, probably close to 20 years since I ran the races and did that. And then I felt that fear for the plot is instructing. And, um, and I have been feeling that fear lately again with the TV. So it's funny, you can go for like decades of feeling none of this, this sweaty adrenaline fear. And then all of a sudden I'm feeling it all the time. But I think that's because I am in a place right now where I have started anywhere and there's momentum and I'm, I'm really pushing myself and growing so fast, which is super exhilarating. But the point is that, um, you know, it, it just you just have to understand that uh, that you're gonna fail sometimes. And in, I, the first time I did my Pilates um, certification, I did. I failed the exam miserably. Like I was humiliated. It just couldn't have gone worse. And even though I, I thought I had really prepared, um, it just it, it was awful. Like you know, I just had to walk away with my tail between my legs. I had to endure like an hour long critique of all the things I did wrong. It's not like I didn't know. It was a nightmare. And then I had to go face all the people that you know I kind of had this group that I was training with. That people who were taking the classes with me, who you know they were they weren't complaining, but I had to admit like no, I failed the exam and I'm going to have to do it again. So. It was a real kick in the stomach, but I'm telling you, it was the best thing that happened to me because all of a sudden, had I just, even if I, you know, kind of done poorly in the test, but they, they still let you pass and they were like, well, Crystal, here's what you did wrong. Here's A, B, and C you did wrong. Um, I may have maybe made those notes and, and corrected myself a little bit, but I wouldn't have been as motivated as it had been by failing and not getting the certification. So I took the notes that they gave me and I really took them to heart and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and I learned how to adjust people and I, you know, learned things I didn't even know I didn't know. And I just put my heart and soul into learning. And, and then when the time came for me to be recertified to try it again, like I passed with flying colors and I am such a better instructor now. My, my depth of knowledge is so much deeper because I was motivated and I would never have been motivated to try all these new things and push myself hard if I had not failed publicly and miserably. So I'm just telling you, failure, don't be afraid of it. I remember when my kids were learning to skate, I was, it was, I was surprised that the instructor, the first thing they learned was how to fall. The instructor showed them how to fall down. I think in one way to show them that falling actually isn't that big of a deal. And that, you know, when you do fall, you can just get back up and start all over again. So it's okay to fall. It's okay to fail. And that really is the only way you're going to get better. And when you look back, you're going to be like, yep, those failures, those challenges were the best thing that ever happened to me. Did you know season two of the Start Anywhere podcast is already in the works? If you have an inspiring story or you know someone who does, get in touch with me. I would love to hear from you. I'm looking for stories from people who once started anywhere, then made a dream come true at different ages and stages of life. Maybe that's you, or maybe it's someone who inspires you. Either way, I want to know about it. And I'd love for you to join the Start Anywhere community. Sign up for the newsletter to keep tabs on what's happening behind the scenes. You can get my contact information in the show notes or go to my website, crystaljoygarrett.com. Now back to the episode. Now we're going to move on to something kind of related as well. Set your goals higher. Jerry and Evan, Jerry, the wonderful coach, confidence coach and, and um, Olympic coach, and Evan, the epic race walker, who, by the way, has done very well. Uh, he's in, his, as you remember, he had to try a new distance that he was scared of because they actually canceled his Olympic distance for race walking. Well, he's crushing it. And Jerry is right there with him also, you know, coaching him and crushing it in his own life. Uh, my friend Jen is friends with them and she gives me reports on how they're doing and they are doing so well. But if you recall Jerry's um, methodology that he uses with Evan and other athletes and also Asanda Matakane who is on um, the podcast talking about she helps uh, women become icons and world leaders she also says you really have to set your goals higher. The problem that both of us, that most of us make, that both of these people said, was that you are not setting your goals high enough. You don't even, you're limiting yourself. Either you have limiting beliefs, like those are limiting beliefs are things like saying, well, I can't have that. I, I'll never do this. I'll never do that. And, be, and, you know, we can get into limiting beliefs next season because that's a whole thing. But just set your goals higher higher than you think you could ever get because really anything is possible. You just have to, if you don't 
even envision it possible, then of course you're not going to get there. So think really big, aim the arrow high, and it'll go up over the target and kind of, it makes an arc shape as it gets toward the target. That's what Jerry told me. It, you shoot up, but it naturally starts to sort of make an arc shape and come down a little bit. So if you shoot directly for the target, you're going to land ahead of the target. But if you shoot over the target, you're going to have a better chance of actually getting the bullseye. So set your goals high. Whatever you want in your life, the amount of money, uh, the, the amount, I don't know what your, what your goals are. Those are personal to you. But just think, add a zero to the number if it's money that you want. Or if you want to go on, on a trip, um, you know, go for the gusto. Do not hesitate to set your goals as high as possible. Now, The next thing I want to talk about is finding joy in your life, even if you've experienced something terrible. I think that another thing people have reached out to me, a lot of people have reached out. And just by the way, if you do, if anything in this podcast resonates with you, send me a note. Send me an email. You can find that on my website. Um, You can send me a message on Instagram. I don't get that many messages. Like I might get a couple a week. It's not like I'm inundated every day with all these messages. Like I read every single one, take them seriously. So please, if something resonated with you, let me know. And a couple of people have said that they, you know, they've shared, I love that they felt that they could share their story with me. And a lot of people who have reached out to me, I am planning to speak to them in season two of the podcast. So if you know someone or you have a story that you'd like to share, please reach out because I would love to have the opportunity to, to learn from you on this podcast and share your story with others. But a lot of people have said, well, I can't start anywhere because I have um, this health issue or I, I have these economic problems or my children, are, are, they need my attention right now. Listen, this is not a contest of who's suffering the most. If you are in a position right now where you, you, know, you just feel that you aren't able to, to take action in your life, well, I mean, I, I, I have compassion for you. But I think that we can take a lesson from people like George Reinitz. Um, and Tarek Hadad, who who uh, who have experienced things that most of us listening couldn't even imagine. I mean, George survived um, just horrific treatment at the hands of other human beings in the concentration camp in Auschwitz. And Tarek also, his family, they got to survive. They managed to escape with their lives, but their home was burned out in Syria. They lost everything they owned. They were living hand to mouth in a tent in refugee refugee camp and you know there was shelling all around them there was there was violence all around them they they really were scared sleeping in that tent that they were going to survive the night and as you recall because of the kind gesture of a cab driver a cab driver offered Tarek a free ride Tarek said I don't have any money I can't take the ride that the cab driver said just hop in and while they were chatting, he told them about this opportunity in Canada, and, and he was able to come over and make a new life for his family. So I'm saying that people who have experienced hardships equal to or even worse than what you're going through right now have managed to find some light, and maybe they got some support, but they were able to move forward and, and live lives now that make them very happy, that they're able to find joy in. So in your life, where whatever you're going through right now, know that it's not going to last forever, and that there is a way to find something, some little grain of joy to carry you through. And I'm going to share a little bit more about some of the challenges I've faced. I've had some health challenges that I didn't talk about this season, but I think that maybe next season is the time to share that in case you're you're experiencing um, some health issues that you'd like a little bit of, uh, I don't know, to hear about somebody else's experience that was scary and then turned out okay in the end. So just whatever you're going through, know that Tarek and George got through it just fine. They're both actually excelling right now and living their lives fully. George is in his 90s and Tarek is is a man in, in just, you know, the prime of his life. So, you know, there's a lesson there. You can find joy in your life no matter what you've experienced. I think the other lesson we can learn from George and Tarek is to be kind. George really hung on to little tiny instances of kindness that people showed him in the concentration camp. In some cases, those people spared his life. And in Tarek's case, 
that cab driver, that cab driver that had nothing to offer but a free cab ride, that changed Tarek's life. In fact, it changed so many people's lives because in both cases, George was able to turn that kindness into a business. And then he employed people and changed their, their lives for the better. Then he went on and had a family and that family expanded and they're all, they wouldn't be here if George hadn't experienced that kindness from someone and then passed it on in his life. And same with Tarek. Tarek not only brought his family over in, in, in very very short order when his family moved to Antigonish, Nova Scotia, they started offering full-time jobs to the locals in an area that was kind of financially challenged. And he's gone on to inspire people in Canada and all over the world. And his chocolate business, Piece by Chocolate, is raising funds to help people all over the world. So a little tiny grain of kindness that you are capable of offering someone else today. If nothing else from this podcast resonates, go out and do one act of kindness for somebody. It, you just don't know what an impact that could have on somebody. It could, it could change their day, it could turn their day around, and it could change their life. So um, absolutely, you know, find joy wherever you can, even when it's not easy, and know that whatever you're going through isn't going to last forever, and, and be kind when you can, because you have no idea how much impact that kindness can have. And also keep it classy. I think George and Tarek just go to show that even when you have experienced um, something horrible in your life, don't go eye for an eye. Don't go for revenge. Just rise above it and know that, you know, just even Pitbull, my favorite, Pitbull, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I, I love Pitbull. He often says that he, he thanks his haters because they, they are the people who motivated him to get better and, um, yeah, and just rise above. Don't, don't, don't sink to their level. Rise above. All right, just a couple more lessons. Accept yourself as you are. Be kind to yourself. That's, that's what I learned from Dr. Jen Huber, who, as you recall, is somebody who encourages people to – embody uh, self-acceptance, accept their body shape, accept their body as it changes through, through life, especially, you know, in midlife. A lot of people notice body changes. Just accept them. Be kind to yourself. And I took that even to heart um, this, this podcast season. I did end up taking a couple of weeks off because I was very busy with, with things happening in my life. I lost my godmother, who was a, a mentor to me, and, and um, it was important to me that I was there for her family and that I was there for her for her funeral. And um, of course, with the taking on the new job, that was more challenging than I expected. So my podcast manager, um, you know, he and I had a little meeting, we decided, let's just take a couple of weeks off, we'll just take a break, let people just sink in with some of the es beautiful episodes that we've already recorded and, um, and take a little break and start again. So sometimes it's okay to just take that break to just be kind to yourself, give yourself a little moment and show that compassion to others as well. Now, speaking of compassion, Sean Parker, oh my gosh, you have to listen to his episode. It's, it's a short one, but it's a good one. Sean Parker has lived his life since he was a child by giving back. He had a coach who told him that it's more important to give to others than it is to sort of take for yourself. And Sean has lived his life um, with that, that kind of attitude of gratitude. He constantly finds ways to help others, and he just is very grateful for his life. Hanging out with Sean is a joy. He just, he has his beautiful, warm, calm, peacefulness. He's also super cool. And I just found that, that I, I often think I'm going to bring a little piece of, of, of Sean Parker's ways into my life by giving to others. Because it's true. When we, if you are kind of down, if you are having kind of a really rough day, two things can turn your day around. One, just go for a walk outside, get out of that stale environment of your home. Get out for a walk, even if it's for 10 minutes. And the other thing you can do to immediately change your day is do something kind for someone else. Give to someone else in some way. It will turn your day around immediately. And that brings me to two more lessons I've learned. One is make new friends, but keep the old. There's a, a famous song. I used to be a girl guide leader. We'd sing this song at the end of every day. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. And I had such a great opportunity to reach out to old friends. Lovna, my dear friend Lovna. We, I hadn't spoken to her in 20 years, and now we, we communicate all the time. And gosh, listen to her episode. What a story she has to share about changing her name 
and then finding her true love out of the blue days later. And then, of course, Melissa Bishop, a Canadian Olympian, she shares about our um, coach, Dennis, who both changed our lives in similar and yet very different ways. Um, Melissa is is just about to have her second child, and I'm so happy that she was able to take time out to, to share her experiences with being an Olympic athlete and, and also just in, in being a human. It was really special to connect with her. Even though we hadn't actually met before we had our time together on the podcast, there was a, a kinship and a, and, a, and a sisterhood because of that time we had spent um, together together. Um, on the track team, even though we had been on the actual team at different times. And of course, Reese Trenhill, the the wonderful real estate mogul slash professional actor slash dad slash storyteller. Um, he is an old friend and always, always full of stories. And, and Reese was, I was just so happy to be able to connect with him again and share all that he's accomplished. And he, if you want to listen to his episode about how he's able to sort of make the most of the shortest work week imaginable, please do listen to his episode. There's a lot there. And he has some great stories about um, Kiefer Sutherland as well. So these are all old friends who came together, but I've met some new friends through friends. For example, Nick Lowry. Who would have thought that that I would have befriended an NFL living legend? But um, but I have, and I feel uh, so excited that he was able to share his story of how he got into the NFL, was it rejected 11 times or eight times by 11 teams. It's Anyway, he didn't take no for an answer, and um, all of that rejection, a little bit like the fear thing we talked about earlier, it molded him into not a good kicker, but one of the greatest NFL kickers of all time. Sam Altieri, she's a woman who uh, is in her late 20s, and she decided that she wasn't going to you know, settle for a life that didn't light her up, and she decided to... Um, you know, start a business. And now she owns a series of businesses and she's doing very well again, changing people's lives. So I would consider her one of the new friends that I've met along this podcast journey. And of course, Sean Leonard, Indigenous Spirit Guide, um, our conversation about opening ourselves up to possibilities beyond you know, the what we typically think of every day that, that how he became a, a, basically a psychic by, you know, kind of opening his mind to that. Um, it's a fascinating story. And he's, he's you know, but it was funny that by talking to Sean, um, Lovna's sister ended up having a connection to him as well. So it's just so funny how old friends can lead to new friends and everybody has a wonderful story to share. And the last lesson that I'm going to leave you with, because I always like to end every episode with something really practical that you can try today, and that is... Anya, she was my very first guest on the podcast. I'm going to let her have the last lesson. And that is something that I've actually tried every, not every night, but when I can think of it, most nights I use her her tip and trick, which is before you go to bed, if you're kind of feeling a gnawing feeling, um, maybe today didn't go that well, or it was a stressful day, or you, you did something, you put your foot in your mouth, or you, you, know, you did something that you're not really happy with. Just sort of think about that. Forgive yourself. Make peace with whatever happened that day. and Just kind of like clear that out of your mind, because she says that the last thing you're worried about or that's gnawing at you before you go to bed, that is going to be the first thing you think of when you wake up. You probably heard that expression, you know, when if you have a spouse or a partner, don't go to bed angry. Well, I think this must be related to this. It's it's a thing. It's rooted in psychology. Anya has a lot of um, experience with this sort of um, thing. So she was saying, just anyway, clear your mind out before you go to bed so that you can wake up fresh. I've tried that. It totally works. If I don't do this and I've had a rough day, I'm roiling all night and I don't get a good sleep. So take that advice. And the second thing is... If you like, you can ask your subconscious a question. So say you're having some trouble, like, oh, my gosh, I, I need help with this particular problem, or um, I, I need a solution. It can be very practical things. It doesn't have to be, like, epic things. Like, if you're like, oh, my gosh, do I paint the house gray or blue? You can ask your subconscious this, and apparently your subconscious will work on it while you're sleeping, and you may dream about the answer, or we, when you get up in the morning, the answer might be there. 
it absolutely works. I do it all the time. So why not, you know, put let your mind be the crock pot, throw the thoughts and questions in before you go to bed, let the crock pot of your mind cook it all night long. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're ready. The meal is done and your answer's there. It actually works. So there you have it. Those are the top 10 lessons that I learned in season one. I hope that you're able to apply some of that to your life. Please go back and listen to any of the episodes if you weren't able to catch them all. Hopefully, uh, just go through and, and see if there's any that resonated with you today. But season two is going to happen. We're going to take a little summer break. We're going to start again in September. So let me know which episodes resonated with you most. Please let me know um, if you love these sort of solo apps or you do you prefer the interviews. Is there somebody particular that you'd love to hear from? I could reach out and see if we could get them on the podcast. I've already got some pretty juicy guests lined up for season two, but there's always room for more. And some of the things that I thought you might, you know, be interested in next um next season might be um, overcoming some of the challenges and health issues. Maybe maybe you want to hear more, more about my running, maybe career changes, goal setting, working through limiting beliefs. I've got some really great friends in the coaching space who could talk about mindset work, manifestation, journaling. I could talk about, you know, how to face your fears showing up on social media and how to be confident on camera. These are all things we could talk about in season two. So let me know what resonated with you what do you want to hear more of what sorts of episodes are your favorite are they do you want short episodes do you want long episodes do you like a nice mix I want to hear from you and believe me all of your feedback means the world so again thank you for listening to season one of the start anywhere podcast and uh, I look forward to being in your ears again in season two Thanks for listening to the Start Anywhere podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, consider giving it a five-star review before you go. This makes a huge difference in helping people find the podcast more easily. And we're trying to start a movement of positivity here. Before we go, I want to give special thanks to Mike Boyd, who produces this show in the Podcast Atlantic Studios in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks again for listening, and until we meet again, remember, whether you're folding a pile of laundry or chasing a big dream, the best thing you can do is start anywhere. Mm-hmm.